And we are too close. We need a long final. I mean, Steve brought a very important point here, and I think it was a, a really a saver. Steve is giving his captain news he doesn't want to hear. He can't land. They're too high and too close. If they attempt a steep descent, they'll bury it in the runway. Eric Janot will have to turn around, fly away from the airport for 37 kilometers, turn again, and come back on a long final approach, slowly descending. If we haven't done this 20 miles, we would have been circling there forever, and until we dropped to the sky or the wind. You can't make it, it's impossible. Keep the speed up, keep the speed up. I try, I, I will do the best I can. And then I, I realized they were right. We have to go on long final. But for the last 13 minutes, the wing has been on fire. Do they have enough time? 20 miles final. Okay. Time is running out. The fire is eating up the left wing. They're still heading away from the airport. Then they have to turn and make a 37 kilometer approach. Can they land before the wing fails? If for our mistake we stayed another 15 minutes in the air with that fire still burning and maybe that tip of the wing would have broken off and again the results would have been disastrous. Two main structural spars give the wing its strength. The missile has made a five meter long crack in the rear spar. Too much stress and it will snap like a twig. There's another danger. Fuel is streaming out of the punctured tanks in the left wing. If the tanks run dry, an engine will stop and they'll crash. We were controlling the bank and the pitch of the aeroplane using the two engines. So if we had lost one engine, then we couldn't do anything with the other engine. So the end result would have been disaster. Despite the fire, the crew's confidence is growing. Now they have some control over the plane, but the prospects for a safe landing are not good. This is the closest any commercial jet has got to a safe landing with no hydraulics. In 1989 in the United States, the crew of this United DC-10 lost all their controls after an engine blew up and turbine blades shredded the hydraulic pipes. The pilots managed to regain some control, moving the throttles backwards and forwards like the DHL crew. There were 296 people on board. But at the last minute, as they approached the small provincial airport of Sioux City in Iowa, disaster. Of the 296 people on board, 111 died. So within four years, two major airliners had crashed because a loss of hydraulics had crippled the planes, killing 631 people. In its investigation report on the Sioux City disaster, the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board asked for urgent research to find ways of controlling big jets that had lost their hydraulics. But over Baghdad, 14 years later, the DHL crew only have their wits to help them as they try to land. I remember the story of the DC-10 of Sioux City, that it has been done before. The only control we still have on the aircraft in the cockpit was the engine. Nothing else. The crew are now 28 kilometers away from the airport, getting close to where they will turn in order to make their long final approach to the runway. 15.2. 16. Now we turn right. Not yet. This is where uh, experience counts now, and you have to rely on what you know. We were pretty sure that we were going to be able to make it to the airport, but we were absolutely not sure that we were going to be able to make it to the runway. 
Now we turn. 17 miles. Now we turn. The only way they can turn is by applying more power to the left engine to make them go right and vice versa. They're swinging round to the right, trying to keep the plane steady and descend all at the same time, using nothing but the end. Speed! Turn nice and stable, keep speed up. Yes, yes. 1,000 feet. 500 feet. 2,200 feet. You turn on the head. Against all their instincts, they'll have to keep the speed up on landing or the nose will drop and they'll crash. They should be landing at around 300 kilometers per hour, but they're coming in 100 kilometers per hour faster. No one knows if the landing gear will take the strain. As they reach 120 meters, the hot air from the ground and strong wind blowing across their flight path upset all their plans. The wind coming from the left and the turbulence, we were drifting to the right. That's where the airport building was. That's bumpy. As the plane approaches the runway, the nose is pointing dangerously low and the left wing is dropping. Make right. Come on, buddy. They're carrying too much speed. They could overrun the runway. Make right. Make right. Keep the speed up. Make we are right. going left. Make yes, right. I increase. Make right. We go to Iceland landing, maybe off the runway. They are landing three, three left. Fire trucks on standby, medivac on standby. Steady. Steady. You are approaching the end of your life. You realize it. Come on, buddy. Thirty. Okay. Terrain. The DHL Airbus has managed to land through an incredible feat of flying. But their troubles are not over. Nice landing, well. Confirm, eva evacuate. 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 Oh, I handle. Final irony, after getting safely to the ground against all the odds, one more unforeseen danger. Hey guys, don't move! That area has unexploded ordnance, do not move! What's that? You think there might be bombs here? I don't believe this. We're coming to get you! The area is still littered with unexploded bombs and shells left over from the battle to capture the airport from Saddam's men. Now we get to you, we're going to back up and you got to follow in our tracks. Now we're going to get you out of here. But you got to walk 
right in my wheel tracks, okay? Keep coming. Keep coming. It's not much further now. 